And he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore most gladly I will rather boast in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9 There are those within the body of faith today who preach a perverse doctrine. They claim that if a person has enough faith, their every request will be granted. And if your request is not granted, it means that you didn't have enough faith. Their solution, of course, is to make sure to buy their latest book or DVD and, of course, send plenty of money to their ministry. This is a cruel form of blaming the victim. It's your own fault if you have cancer, or if your child gets struck by a car, or your family faces financial difficulties. You didn't have enough faith, they say. It also serves to keep the purveyors of this doctrine from having to actually do anything to help. In the midst of your devastation, these hypocrites don't serve or reach out in any form that would actually alleviate the problem. They simply tell you to have more faith. Even worse, these same people take earthly and material gains as some sort of proof that the person in question has more faith than others and ought to be exalted. They give preference to those who have material blessings and use that as an excuse to buddy up to the rich and powerful here in this world. And even worse, they do it in the name of our Lord and Messiah. Scripture is full of God's condemnation of these sinful attitudes and ideas. In the book of Job, we clearly see a man who God himself claims to be a blameless and upright man, one who fears God and shuns evil. We then watch as Satan is allowed to strip this man of every earthly blessing, his money, his material possessions, his children, and then his health. As we are given a look at the interactions on the spiritual plane, we are able to see that Job committed no sin that resulted in him suffering so greatly. In John chapter 9, even the disciples had fallen prey to the teachings of the Pharisees that said that physical afflictions were proof of sin. They passed a man who was born blind and asked, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Yeshua corrected them, saying, Neither this man nor his parents sinned, but that the works of God should be revealed in him. I must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. The night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. In James chapter 2, the apostle warns against equating material wealth with holiness and faith. My brethren, do not hold the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory, with partiality. For if there should come into your assembly a man with gold rings in fine apparel, and there should also come in a poor man in filthy clothes, and you pay attention to the one wearing the fine clothes, and say to him, You sit here in a good place, and say to the poor man, You stand there, or sit here at my footstool. Have you not shown partiality among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? James goes on further in the same chapter to condemn those who offer platitudes instead of assistance. What does it profit, my brethren, if someone says he has faith but does not have works? Can faith save him? If a brother or sister is naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you says to them, Depart in peace, be warmed and filled, but you do not give them the things which are needed for the body, what does it profit? As a nurse, I see so much pain and suffering and death. And in those moments of grief, 
I am often privileged to see so much faith. To tell a family that has just lost a child or a person who has just had a devastating setback financially, well, you must not have the right mental attitude. You must not have enough faith. It's like spitting in their face and in the face of the Lord who loves them and whose grace is sufficient to carry them through those terrible times. And his grace is sufficient to carry you through your difficult times as well.